Okay, welcome. Look at this. I love this shot. We are the geeks that love to study the word. So welcome to week two of four of the Green Foods Bible Study. I'm Joy. I'm your host, and I'm excited to be here and learn more about green food. So we're going to go for it, explore, give you the cliff notes. Hopefully you did read the book because there's so much in it. But if you didn't, you're going to get some basics. Uh, myself and my wonderful, wonderful co-host, Elizabeth Bugler. In fact, let's go ahead and pin your video. Hi. Hey, everybody. Thanks for coming and being geeks with me. <laughs> well, you've like taken it to the max. I'm impressed <laughs> with what you have learned. And actually, Elizabeth and I were talking before the call, and I said, you know, if I can do this, anyone can, because... I'm not a doctor. I'm a lay person like all of you. I did study massage therapy for a time, but you know, I'm just like all of us learning as I go and, and sharing really cool, wonderful green foods with people because I care about health and I care about people having optimum health. And we're so blessed to be able to promote Purium and earn an income sharing wellness with other people. And we're really blessed to learn. I think one of the greatest things that we get to do here on our planet Earth journey is, is grow and grow in the arenas that we like to. And if we don't take care of our bodies and ourselves, it's very difficult to take care of the causes we believe in, our businesses, our work, etc. So it really all starts with health. What are we going to cover tonight? Chapters three and four specifically chronic conditions, common denominators of disease. This is a biggie. I really love this particular part of, these, of chapter three. And the good news are there's cause and effect. And so there's causes and we can call them cures or we can call them ways to prevent and ways to address our challenges. That's pretty much chapter three. And then in chapter four, we talk about cereal grasses, grains, gluten, etc. So our current state of disease and how green foods can heal us. So what allopathic medicine is not well equipped to do is stop the energies of disease before it goes too far. That's profound. Allopathic medicine. It is great for crises, <laughs> but in general, allopathic or modern medicine, it suppresses symptoms, suppresses symptoms, which is a temporary fix that will only lead to more problems down the road. So many people get flus, they get issues, and they go to pharmaceuticals, and what we're proposing through education is there might be other options. What we're proposing is there might also be ways to prevent ever getting those symptoms. Whole plants versus drugs, we talked a little bit about last week because we talked about whole plants and nutraceuticals versus superfoods versus chemical constituents of plants. <laughs> So a little bit more on that was covered in chapter three. Pharmaceutical medicine is causing unacceptable or even life-threatening side effects, often conventionally requiring another drug to counteract the side effects of the first one. Last night, I was doing some research on some very specific antibiotics for a particular condition, and it, I was blown away at the possible side effects, like people are losing hearing by taking pharmaceuticals. So I'm not gonna tell anyone when it is or isn't a good idea to take pharmaceutical medication, but I will say that there are side effects. And so what we wanna really look at is the possibility that whole plants have a wisdom because there's so many co cooperative components of the chemical constituents that the best side effects are detoxifying, losing weight, feeling better, mental clarity. Um, I thought this was really interesting on page 41 as well, that the direct-to-consumer advertising, the DTC, was it was against the law to even um, promote pharmaceuticals until 1990s. And Elizabeth, you were saying in other countries, do you want to elaborate on this? 
Yeah, well, we all see those um, commercials where it talks about the drugs are cure this, but then like Joy was saying, there's like a whole list of deadly, sometimes um, very uncomfortable to deadly um, side effects. Those commercials were against the law until the mid 1990s and they're actually against the law in many other countries. So I thought that was interesting. Very worth sharing. <laughs> I want to share another worth sharing moment, which is a true story. This is my sweet, incredible dad. And um, quite some years ago, he was on diabetic medication. And we spent two weeks together on a, a raw food, whole plant diet program. And after less than that two weeks, it was mid course, he was able to get off of his diabetic medication. And he's so proud of it when we go out to eat or, you know, just out in the world. I often hear him sharing how, oh, I don't take diabetic medication. I, um, I've changed that. I eat differently. He's not on a raw food diet, but he has now learned how to manage his food intake and what he does based on plants and diet, which is a cool thing for anyone who used to be dependent on a pharmaceutical. So, all right, heart disease, Elizabeth. Well, I'm just going to quote David Sandoval here. Um, in um, what he found out was that the mainstream considers um, chronic uh, diseases such as heart disease to be permanent. The mainstream medicine does not think that chronic conditions are curable. So a person who takes drugs for a chronic condition, such as heart disease, in the view of medical mainstream, will need those drugs for the rest of his or her life, which is kind of mind-blowing to hear that. And with heart disease, um, when you look at the list of drugs needed for heart disease, you're going to be looking at drugs to treat um, low to for lower the blood pressure, to lower cholesterol, triglycerides, to thin the blood, to regulate um, a regular heart rhythm. And when you see this list of meds, you may think that each one of these symptoms springs from a different source. And the going medicine, um, Western medical wisdom is that each of these things are um, dealt with separately, which we'll get into um, more in this chapter. They really all spring from a root cause. Uh, so I'm excited to share about that soon. <laughs> so much to come. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> let's tease them a little bit. We, we, we really talked about this before, but you know, let's just remind ourselves that we're not talking about vitamin supplements because we don't have any synthetic man-made ingredients whatsoever. So when people ask, does Purium have a multivitamin? I recommend the power of 10 because I've heard David Sandoval, I've heard a lot of the Purium incredible trainers and you know, talk about how unique this particular anti-aging product is. Um, it's a synergistic combination of green foods and herbs. And it will really be the basis of the body's nutritional needs. So um, our nature's multivitamin would be Power of 10. All this information is on the website. Take a look at this product if you haven't tried it. It's really good. It's tasty. I like having it too because it's so small. It makes a great gift. And I, I think it's a really wonderful feature product it shows. Um, but absolutely can you get vitamins and minerals from superfoods yeah highly concentrated superfoods will assimilate into the body very easily where synthetic vitamins and minerals are harder to break down and some people believe that it just the body doesn't uptake them as well mm -hmm. So on page 36 of the new version, and it's different on the older version, but David um, really outlines how important it is to start kids young. And my, my sweet friend Elizabeth, who's a mom, <laughs> you know a lot about that. Yeah, and, and that's, um, Dave mentioned, Dave Sandoval mentions that children are most vulnerable in the young stages because they're growing. And so 
diet is really important for them, um, for their basic functioning of their bodies throughout their lives. And with such a wide availability of junk food, fast food, highly processed food, it makes a parent's job in funneling the right nutrients a lot harder. <laughs> so, and the other um, point is that the, the, you know, these synthetic vitamins, the parents might think, oh, these are, you know, at least the kids are getting the vitamins. Well, with, with these um, synthetic vitamins, they may contain processed sugars, artificial colors and flavorings, and also too high of an intake over a long period of time of these isolated nutrients like vitamin D, A, and iron can actually hurt children more. So giving them a shake, um, like power of 10, is teaching kids that pills aren't the answer and that whole foods and drinks are. Wow. It's pretty powerful. We have so many happy kids, which is a whole other cool call. <laughs> yeah, I'm really impressed with the new line. Um, you know, just we just added this in. It's not so much at this section in the book, but while we're talking about kids, I, I just think it's important to remember that we, am a, we are a GMO-free line and that study finds 65 percent increase in children's hospitalizations for inflammatory bowel disease in the past decade. And we've talked about this in other courses, but you know, GMO-free foods are going to protect our bodies in so many ways. And you know, what I, I think what I want to say is, um, well, actually, let's go to this slide. Educate yourself. If you haven't taken time to really look at what's happening with genetically modified organisms, please contact someone that introduced you to the Green Foods Bible. We would love to send you genetic roulette. You can go to Choose Cure Health under health education. We have a so, whole section on the importance of eating real food, organic food, and protecting specifically not just us, but the children. Because allergies, Issues with digestion, this is all increased since genetically modified foods. And Seeds of Doubt, one of my favorite videos, it's featured on Choose Pure Health as well. This woman was a skeptic who was brought into it through kids because her children had severe, severe allergies. Green foods are amazing. And I love this quote by Dr. Mercola that consuming a variety of fresh organic greens is one of the absolute best things you can do for the body. We just included that because this is an individual, a doctor who's very well respected. And as we move out there as ambassadors of green foods, we're so grateful we have David Sandoval as a pioneer in his lineage, but we have all of these fantastic researchers and doctors that also agree. Um, we were kind of laughing about this earlier, Elizabeth and I, but we'll bring it up again. Longevity. It's in the calories, page 39. Nutrition is one essential key to wellness. A high nutrition to low calorie ratio is key. That's why we want high density nutrition like superfoods, like the cereal grasses, like Purium, because we get a lot of nutrition with very few calories. So he says on page 39, the best way to halt or reverse the aging process is through the consumption of nutrient dense, low calorie plant based foods. These foods are the key to a long disease free living and life. And Dr. McCola talks a lot about that too. Both David Sandoval and Dr. McCola really encourage intermittent fasting. So I can't say that I've been extremely successful at this because I love food. <laughs> but I, I do really see that, you know, with Purium, I found, um, and especially when I do the transformations, I found a way to like feel satisfied with fewer calories. Um, and you know, this is a wonderful insight for everyone and everyone to know about. So this whole chapter really boils down to, we cannot drug ourselves into good health. That's profound. We cannot drug ourselves into good health. And while green foods and the Purium product line is one element of a healthy lifestyle, we need to remember that 
you know, there are many keys to wellness in their physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. And you can change your health by your thoughts and your thoughts by your health. It goes both way. So you can eat more yummy green foods and drink them and you will start thinking better thoughts. You can think better thoughts and you're going to crave better food because the body will begin to want, you know, the health and nutrition. By the way, this is Christopher and I um, about 20 years ago. If <laughs> you didn't recognize these characters. Um, but is that a nice lifestyle? Peaceful? You know, I'm a gardener. Christopher's a musician. And, you know, just this is important, too, that we all live our life purpose, that we really do what's ours to do. Um, so I wanted to throw that in there, which is sprinkled throughout the entire Green Foods Bible. And absolutely, it is emphasized in the Purium lifestyle. And um, that's why we say it's the Purium lifestyle. It's not just the food. Are you living your life purpose? Are you paying attention to your mental, emotional, and spiritual needs? So the next question we're going to address is, are chronic conditions reversible? Dr. Jerry Swartz of New York City, he says that the availability of whole food concentrates, such as Purium, this is an important breakthrough. A diet properly balanced through power food consumption creates a physical environment that allows mental stress to be relieved. A lot of other doctors agree. And so when our mental stresses are relieved, our chronic diseases reversible. Elizabeth, do you want to add anything to this conversation here? Yeah, I do agree with that. Um, with the next slide, it's going to go into the common, or the slide after that, but the common denominators are, are going to be um, a real key imp imp component. And it's amazing because the green foods address all of the common denominators um, that cr cause chronic diseases. But David also points out that the green foods diet goes best with a low stress lifestyle and um, exercise and you know meditation prayer he does say that in in these chapters well let's talk about the economic impact before we go into that next slide wherever it is <laughs> the economic impact of poor health so i thought this was in really interesting on page 43 chronic conditions are the major cause of illness disability and death in the united states it's projected that by the year 2040, some 160 million Americans will have chronic conditions and that the cost of treating those conditions will reach or exceed $864 billion. I, that's a lot of zeros. So it's not just costing individuals, it's costing our country and the world. So health is a personal investment, but it's really a global investment. It's not just your neighbor's problem or your problem it's a world problem we need to address chronic chronic conditions we want to live radiant and have healthy bodies um, what are chronic conditions dermatitis arthritis asthma diabetes adhd super chronic now hay fever autoimmune disease bronchitis cancer all of these things listed and more are considered chronic, reoccurring, they don't go away. And we call them conditions, we call them diseases, we call them challenges, and some people just call them, well, they call them a lot of things. I'm not gonna repeat, repeat right now, but they're not, they're not fun to live with. And there's so many people suffering. I, I just sometimes like look at this world, I just, there's so many people suffering that don't really realize there's a way out. What causes death? This is from the Center for Disease Control. Heart disease leads to the leading causes, cancer, lower respiratory disease, which is often pneumonia, accidents, stroke, and listen to this, properly prescribed pharmaceuticals and hospital stays. That's where a lot of people get pneumonia. And you know, this is, this is documented. So we need to address how can we support other people in living better lives. 
This is an article also by Mercola on the economic costs. You can Google um, if you're more interested in that. And I wanted to um, also just put out there that we have a really nice resource section under health education. It's called Battle Plan. So we don't talk a lot about chronic disease as Perium promoters because as you remember last week we covered what we can and cannot say we're not doctors we're not treating disease but we're helping people with issues but if you want to look at the issues associated with some chronic diseases or health conditions go to the resource section and find some purium solutions for those it's very well indexed and i i really encourage people to go there know that it's available so when people say, I have X, Y, and Z, you have a resource that you can utilize. Okay, Elizabeth, this is the slide you were looking for. Go for it. Yeah. I, um, so these are the common denominators in inflammation. And if you look at each one of them, it's amazing because green foods address each one of these. Inflammation, oxidation, acidity, lack of enzymes, lack of trace minerals difficult or stagnant elimination, and toxic exposure. And so just touching a little bit on each one, um, inflammation is an excessive, slow-burning, low-grade inflammation. It's believed to be at the root of most common health problems. It's an important um, factor to, to look at. If you have a pain that won't go away and it's hanging on, it may be because of an overblown inflammatory response. And this is usually caused from a, di a diet high in processed and cooked foods, particularly those with white flour, sugar, dairies, and meats. Those push the body towards a more inflammatory state. And then when you have a diet rich in vegetables and fruits and whole grains, this is going to um, push the inflammatory balance in the other direction. So the foods that we eat are a natural inflammatory. Speaking of which, here's an, a food that has um, tremendous documented value in um, having anti-inflammatory properties. And going on to oxidation, oxidation is just when there's a, a rampant free electron that um, we get from exposure from um, chemicals or radiation or cigarette smoke or air pollution or smog or um, radiation from our computers and it creates a singlet electron that goes around and basically destroys all the other cells in our body and this chain reaction is stopped by an antioxidant and um, these the excess and free radicals is a major um, um, factor in the aging process Taking mega doses of vitamin C, um, E, and beta carotene um, won't control the oxidation process. In fact, taking those of the single um, isolated nutrients can actually cause more free radical um, formation. So we require synergistic concentrations of antioxidants that are found in fresh, green, leafy, deep green leafy foods. And then um, acidity, so lack of alkaline. Um, the human blood is, I wish Vanessa was here because she would love this. Last week I quoted 3 point, um, or 7.36. David Sandoval even goes higher and says that the range goes up to 7.45. Um, and this is required for life. Um, so we have two large organs in our body that control and buffer acidity, our lungs, believe it or not. Um, mm -hmm. Deep breathing alkalizes the body and gets rid of excess carbon dioxide. And then the kidneys um, prevent metabolic acidosis by buffering acidity with minerals. But here's the scary part is if we have a really acidic lifestyle and diet, it's going to pull those minerals from the bones in our body. And so we can actually um, deplete our bone stores and other tissues. Um, and this contributes to the depletion of trace minerals. Um, so once again, we look at the alkalizing and oxygenating power of chlorophyll. Um, and this is going to, once we have an alkaline environment, the pathogenic harmful bacteria can't take hold. Um, and we know that cells with tumors, um, the cells within the tumors are more acidic than those that aren't. 
And then with lack of enzymes in the diet, um, it appears that we're, we are born with an, an inherent amount of enzymes in our body at birth, um, and we can deplete those enzymes quickly, especially in the standard American lifestyle with diets of cooked and processed foods because they're devoid of enzymes and it uses up our enzyme stores in our body. Um, if we heat foods above 118 degrees, we're going to destroy the enzymes. This includes pasteurization, microwaving, and canning. Um, so the enzymes can be robbed through our di digestive tract and in our body to, if we don't have enough, it, our body needs to digest that food, so it's gonna find en enzymes somewhere. And this kind of enzyme shuffling will deplete our body um, over the years. Um, and enzymes are the labor force. They're what gets everything done in our body. There's over 2,000 distinct um, enzymes. And there's metabolic, detoxification, digestive, enzymes found in raw food. And so the foods that David Sandoval has harnessed these enzymes are um, in the superfoods that are including uh, glutathione peroxidase, catalase, superoxide dismutase, zinc and copper containing enzyme. So um, these enzymes are made in the body, but when we age and you know have a more American lifestyle, we use up those enzymes, but we can actually replace those with the foods, the fresh green foods and superfoods. Mm -hmm. um, so, the types of minerals I, or types of enzymes went through that. And then, um, hey, I was just going to stop for a second because I had a note and I know we have a lot of material. Oh, yeah, yeah. But um, you were talking about the breath, alkalizing the body. Yeah. I thought we're at the midway mark. Maybe we could all take a deep breath. So much amazing material. You rock. Okay. I'm ready to keep learning. <laughs> and I'm here, Elizabeth. Yeah. Oh, well, oh awesome. hi. Nice to see you. I, hey. Sorry, I didn't have the code I, at first, but I've heard it all. Glad. We're glad you're here. Okay, trace minerals. Trace minerals. Um, one of the studies in the Green Foods Bible um, that David Sandoval points out, it was published through the medical journal in the Lanc Lancet uh, British research paper, where they gave over 5,000 people um, high concentrations of D3, calcium, or combination, or placebo. And what they found was, in the end, no combination of these supplements improved the chances of avoiding um, a second fracture or helping the bone density because our body does not have the capability to absorb and utilize minerals in high doses. Um, our intestines are made to absorb minerals and vitamins in trace amounts in combination with one another, not in high doses and in, in isolation. Wow. And the ionic elements and really Power of 10 and all the products have a lot a lot yeah, super lights yeah chlorophyll in general um difficult or eliminate of uh, stagnant elimination i found this interesting because um in the book it points out that ancient egyptian physicians were the first to describe a condition called auto toxic auto intoxication and this is where the waste would get backed up in the large intestine because of poor elimination and then it would be absorb back into our bodies and would wreak even more havoc. Um, and the ancient Greeks actually knew about it as well, and they called it putrefaction. Um, and the new diagnosis, um, as Dave points out, is called multiple chemical sensitivity, MCS. Hmm. And so the enzymes in the fresh raw food help to ensure that those meals are moving down quickly and moving through the bowels. Um, really quite nicely. And then um, toxic exposures. Dave does talk a minute about fermented foods, how um, they um, are actually living foods and they've been around in the human diet for thousands of years. So if you don't have any enzymes, eat some fermented foods, cultured foods, because that's going to give you the enzymes. I like to eat it with every meal. Um, toxic exposures. Yeah. 
So according to the US fact sheet published by the National Institute, there's over 15,000 chemicals um, currently in high volume in the US um, that American production varies of 3 billion pounds per year of chemicals. And this is um, in our homes, our offices, carpets, mattresses, the growth of crops, fabrics, solvents. Um, and this is toxic to the human body. Um, and it's predisposing us to cancer. Um, so, yeah. You just whizzed through all the common denominators of disease, didn't you? <laughs> yes, I did. That was amazing. I got a little chat. In the meantime, from Mark, he said that Dr. Dean Orish, who's a pretty well-known physician, he says that chronic conditions, especially heart disease, can be reversed and prevented by maintaining a diet of whole and organic foods, nice. especially a diet based on a plant-based foods. Thank you, Mark. That was awesome. Nice. Thank you, you guys, for being so active. <laughs> well, let's continue on. So page 46, it's astonishing how good these physiological symptoms are at fixing what's broken. As long as there aren't too many accumulated toxins interfering with or interpreting these processes, which could also explain a lot since green foods eliminate these toxins. Green foods naturally, inherently eliminate toxins. We'll learn a lot more about that in the next two weeks. Oh, goody, 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 it's time for a story. So I'm gonna um, introduce uh, Joel here. And, and Joel, in fact, I know you're live, so I wanna make sure I unmute you and get you here. There you are. Hi, Joy. Well, hey, I'm gonna bring the slides up in a second, but tell us your Purium story. So actually, the timing, Joy, is pretty good. Um, about a year ago, I turned 60 and was um, uh, really going through a midlife crisis. Uh, I, I was struggling with my weight, probably about 30 pounds overweight, looking for different options on how I could improve my health and, and lose the weight I needed to. And I um, was looking at all sorts of other companies, uh, network marketing companies, et cetera, and looked at these products and looked at the labels and was like, are you kidding me? You really want me to take this stuff to lose weight? It makes no sense. There are just as many bad things as good things in these products. Why would I want to do that? So when I saw the uh, ingredients on the Purium label, it just made total sense to me that this was the path. And um, uh, so I uh, lost, uh, um, did the 10 day cleanse uh, immediately and in my first 10 days I lost eight and a half pounds of those eight and a half pounds eight of that was body fat and um, uh, about 10 weeks later I uh, ended up uh, losing uh, a total of about 30 pounds and went from 31 percent total body fat down to 21 percent body fat lost my cravings for sugar have a lot more energy stopped eating dairy. I used to eat at least a pound's worth of cheese a week, no longer touch it. Uh, feeling so much better. I used to eat a candy bar at least worth of sugar a day. I don't even like it anymore. So it's yeah. just, Purium has changed my life. And uh, I tell people, you know, I'm just so excited, but I just can't keep my mouth shut. I have to tell everyone I see. <laughs> keep telling them because it's inspiring. <laughs> so yeah, I owe it all to Purium. And of course, myself and my commitment to doing it, but I couldn't have done it without Perium. Thank you, Joel. I love the real stories too. And uh, hey, we, we also love clinical data. Thanks, Joel. Thanks, Joy. I'm going to switch over to Vanessa. Hey. Hey, you, blo you do blood cell analysis. You did a recently a little study before and afters. What did you find? Um, we had uh, four people who were willing to sample peri Purium Power Shakes, the Appleberry and Vanilla. And we saw um, cells that weren't quite round in the blood. Some of them were digestively challenged. Um, and during the process of being monitored while drinking the green food, we saw the cells return to a very balanced um, shape. This is the red blood cells specifically. So right in the session, which these sessions were probably 15 minutes, 
This was a free clinic I did Saturday specifically to see um, the green foods in people's blood while we got a baseline and then we got them on the product. Um, I had a couple um, appleberries walk out of the office, which was really exciting. And also I saw um, vibrations for somebody had an inflammatory um, presence. We can see that with like pickup sticks in the blood. It looks like fibrin, that's called fibrin. And we actually saw some of that just disappear. We started seeing that beautiful black background. So I was pretty amazed to see inflammation resolve, but I always ask for healings in the session and the green foods showed up and we saw, we saw balance in the red blood cells. We saw some of the white blood cells become more in, aerobic and started crossing the field of the sample. We saw the inflammation dissipate. So it actually um, is very powerful. I, I would like to have seen more from the water, get a lot of information more from, from the milieu. But the, what we saw just in those four people who were tested and sampled, uh, it was undeniable. There was a definite process of rebalancing the body. Nice. Well, yeah. I know you're working with clients on the long term, and you also have the opportunity to see people make pretty dramatic changes by bringing in superfoods into their diet, right? So after yeah, this, all, this is a great tool for that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Thank you for you're welcome. Me. Thank you for inviting me to do that. I, I absolutely loved it, and the community loved it. Oh, so. good. And I'm glad some people bought some Power Shaker <laughs> took it away off the shelves. <laughs> cool. So we're going to transition into Chapter 4, and it's going to take about 15 minutes. So we really are condensing the Green Foods Bible, but we're now moving into a conversation about cereal grasses. So you know the whole line of Perian products has cereal grasses, land veggies, sea veggies, algaes. Tonight, what are cereal grasses? But let's start with a little education on grains. Understanding the difference between whole grains, sprouted, activated grains, and cereal grasses, because we also have a sprouted barley. Up above, you'll see grains, you know, pastas, breads. We'll get there in a second. They're all based on these grains. Within grain is a massive potential. The first stage of that potential is sprouted grain, sprouted barley. Um, any grain can be sprouted. The moment we sprout a grain, the gluten is broken down, the enzymes are activated, and we have a live food with much more potentiality. And that's what's so unique. We're not taking grains in our bodies with Purium. These, these are absolutely amazing sprouted or grasses. Whole grains versus refined grains. So processed grains have been stripped of all nutritional gifts. And we know that, you know, so when you buy something white, and I've heard a lot of people say, just avoid white food, <laughs> white flour, white pasta, because you're not getting the brand, the endosperm, or the germ. You're not getting the whole grain. This is on page 63 of the Green Foods Bible, and we know that, that refined grains lead to rapid and dramatic fluctuations in blood sugar, because they totally convert to sugar, and they give us that up-down feeling which can then lead to further cravings for refined grains and their more lethal cousin, refined sugars. Wow. Did he say lethal cousins? Yeah, sugar causes death. So diets high in refined grains and sugars set you up for type 2 diabetes, obesity, food allergy, and heart disease. Candida also predispose us to chronic inflammation and even cancer. Refined grains in their food products are substandard foods for a variety of reasons. You can do more research online. I mean, they are starchy and they're high in gluten. Whereas grasses, grasses come from this amazing thing called a grain. But I love this image and I'm... I'm excited to learn more about what makes grasses unique. It's your turn, Elizabeth. Okay. Well, 
Um, David Sandoval, I just love what he says. The, the fabulous thing about grains is not that they could be husked and pulverized to make flour. It's that they are seeds. Seeds that if grown properly will yield brilliant green shoots of grass infused with life energy and packed with life-giving nutrients vitamins, minerals, chlorophyll, and enzymes. He also says it's time to put our grains to better use by sprouting them and partaking in the green stuff that springs from them. Um, a blade of wheatgrass is far more nutrient-dense calorie for calorie than, a, than the grain from which it sprouts. So we're getting more nutrient potential in the little green sprout than the grain. And Dave also goes on to say that um, gluten, um, that you can continue to use wheat or barley grass juice while on a gluten-free diet. And he also says that although the grains, which are the seeds of both plants, um, of the barley and the wheatgrass and the alfalfa are, although those, the seeds of those contain gluten, once you sprout it, um, then it doesn't contain gluten at all. And you can supplement your diet safely with the wheatgrass, um, even with celiac is what David Sandoval points out. Gluten-free, gluten-free purine products. There's so many of them. One little note here is you can find out online if they're vegan, kosher, gluten-free, certified organic. So, you know, as you're, as you're perusing your website, make sure that if you're working with anyone who has celiac, you, you get them the gluten-free products. Yeah. So the specific grasses we have at Purium are wheatgrass, barley grass, kamut grass, and alfalfa grass. Now these are all found in a lot of the different formulas, tons of them. What is unique about grasses as opposed to the algaes in the land and sea vegetables? Why grasses? We've talked a lot about the potency found in grass, but what specifically? Lots of vitamins, minerals, enzymes, amino acids, and chlorophyll, and we know all the benefits of chlorophyll. There's a lot of ways to grow cereal grasses. There's trays and there's outdoor. Those are the two main ways that people grow grasses. We at Purium are really quite blessed to be able to be working with farmers, specifically in Utah, a high altitude family farm that is growing our grass. And because you went to that PHP Academy, Elizabeth, I think you learned even more about it. Well, um, all, all plants are directly related to the mineral content of the soil. So if you're growing your wheatgrass in plastic trays, you're not going to get high nutrient, a high nutrient plant. But David Sandoval um, thankfully had enough foresight that he's been working with these farmers for generations, cultivating these crops, like Joy was saying, in really rich soil. So it is directly related, the soil is directly related to the nutrient value of the plant. So the joint team, I was really excited because I got to learn about a new doctor um, named Dr. Charles Schnee, um, Schnabel, Dr. Charles Schnabel, and he was a 1930s agricultural chemist who stumbled across the effects of grass when his chickens got ill, and they started um, eating green shoots of grass, the very tiny one on the left of the screen, that very tiny shoot, they were eating those, and he saw um, amazing healing response was elicited in them, and also their fertility went up. So this man spent the majority of his life studying grass, and he actually found out that um, why the chickens preferred the tender little grass shoot is because of the jointing stage. The jointing stage is also referred to as segmentation, and um, if the grass is cut or grazed before that 
first little joint of grass, just like if you look at a piece of bamboo, you know how there's joints in the bamboo? Well, if you, if you cut it or trim it before that first stage, it will grow back. That's the grass's way of surviving. But if you cut it after the first jointing, it won't grow back. Um, but even more interesting is um, that the first joint is where, before the first jointing stage, is where all of the um, vitamins and minerals in the life source, um, all grasses, Dr. Schnabel says, reach a peak of food value on the first day that the joint begins to form. And that's when David Sandoval harvested it. He has this down to a science, harvesting huge amounts of wheatgrass right before the first jointing stage. I mean, yes, processed at low temperature. So Dr. Schnabel also found in his years of research that there's no difference in effectiveness or nutrient contact between gently dehydrated grass juice and fresh. In all of the studies that they do, um, with wheatgrass juice, they're actually using the powdered barley, the gently dehydrated powdered barley. And David Sandoval actually points out that um, the concentrated powdered form is more nutrient dense than a fresh grass of wheat of wheatgrass um, juice because a fresh glass of wheatgrass juice is actually mostly water. Um, and you know, I mean, why not partake in it? He's growing in this awesome soil, temperature or processing at 88 degrees, and it's just a really mineral-rich food. So I'm, ex I'm excited. I get to drink it every day. <laughs> it's pretty. It is pretty um, remarkable. I like what you said. He had the foresight to create not just the fields and the relationships with the farmers, but this dehydration process that is so low temperature. And it's processed within a few hours of being cut. So it's super live. Yeah. You get it for less than we would liquid go to the wheatgrass bar. And it's absolutely effective. And gosh, everyone loves it, even kids. <laughs> this is my friend's son. He loves it. Um, the pure cereal, cereal grasses, the products that are available in Purium that are only cereal grasses are the organic barley green juice and the organic Kamut blend. And I have my, my dear friend, the Kamu blend with me today. And I brought my friend, but um, it's, hey, and by the way, I am grain free and I do cereal grasses all the time and my body loves them and tolerates them, but I can't digest grains very well at all. Grasses, absolutely. Um, organic Kamut, wheatgrass, oat grass powder and alfalfa so those are some of the cereal grasses in the camut and then we have the plain barley grass as well all right a couple more slides of knowledge and information camut what is camut grass why are we doing camut this is also david sandoval's pioneering mentality so, um, gosh, it's all in the book. Read it. It's an amazing study. But bottom line, he found this incredible Egyptian <laughs> grain. Um, and it has a history of itself that's incredible. But what's nice about it is it is two to three times larger than a kernel of wheat. And it has a higher concentration of nutrition, including essential fats, vitamins, and minerals. So, Kemet grass is a Kamut not a it is a type of wheat elizabeth you want to add anything to this yeah kamut um from reading chapter four is um believed to be less allergenic than most of the modern wheat out there um, and it's higher in protein 20 to 40 times more higher in protein than any wheat out there wow wheat grass yes or wheat Yes. Okay. We don't wheat grass, wheat, wheat grass and wheat. Okay. Yep. So page 76, who should drink cereal grasses? And obviously the answer is everyone because we all want to detoxify. We want to cleanse. We want the chlorophyll. We want the nutrition, the vitamins, the minerals, the enzymes, the oxidation, everything we've been talking about, the pH, right? So wheatgrass is a solution to all those common denominators. 
And all those common denominators lead to these discomforts or diseases. In the book, some specific conditions that do very well with cereal grasses are listed. And, and they're right here as well. What I love about these dehydrated greens is they're so easy on the go. I've got a good friend who camps, river wraps, and does long trips, you know, multi-day trips. And she's always taking the superfoods and the greens with her. And for those people that are working in offices, just as effective on the go, healthy way to oxygenate, detoxify, liven up your body. In the new version of the Green Foods Bible, but not the old, I'm pretty sure, um, there's a little section on green tea, and that's the end of this chapter. So um, I love green tea, and here's some information, page 82. It's a wonderful addition to any diet that's already green. Um, it's a very powerful protection against diseases and um, that plague human beings in the first world nations, such as or especially cardiovascular disease, cancer, and Alzheimer's disease. So green tea may slow cancer growth, protect against skin cancer, act as a weight reducing aid, prevent Alzheimer's, chelate heavy metals, We'll learn more about that next week. <laughs> Protect liver against free radical damage. Offer antioxidant, anti-clotting, and anti-inflammatory support. And reduce stress. Oh, my gosh. We, we had so much to share and so much more. But I really want to emphasize again our rich resource library. Thanks to everyone who's been contributing. It's like our own Wikipedia, so anything you want to add to the library, let me know and we'll post it up there. Go to Choose Pure Health Resources. There's a gluten-free list. There's also the Seeds of Doubt GMO that I mentioned, and there's an excellent audio under health education with Dr. Jeff Essen called Purium and Gluten-Free Diets, and I really recommend that audio. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So I'm going to open up the line now to everyone. Elizabeth, thank you. Thank you, Joy. My yeah. pleasure. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. We made it in an hour, which is pretty impressive. It's a lot to cover. How's everyone doing out there? Doing good. Thank you. Excellent. Christopher, why don't you share a little bit? Um, we always like to highlight you at the end of the calls. Oh, what would you like me to share? I mean, I'm just grateful for uh, what you're doing there. This is a great tool. I'm really excited about having these videos that we can send our people because so much of it is education and uh this is a great tool and so is choose pure health so it's awesome yeah and last week you shared that great kamut story and i know you you do the kamut blend sometimes do you have any recipes for us or anything for cereal grasses well yes the carrot juice and the kamut are really delicious and if you want to mix that with the um barley grass too because the barley grass doesn't taste as good as the wheat grass. So you definitely try the um, carrot juice in with the Kamut. Okay. Carrot, yeah, I agree. I like the taste of the Kamut blend a little more than the barley grass juice. But yeah. I, I buy the barley grass, and sometimes it's just fun for variety. I believe in variety. Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay, you always have recipes. Come with recipes. I love to hear what you, your concoctions. <laughs> well, I always like to use rice bran solubles and cream and vanilla option. You can put that in with the MVP um, with a banana or whatever, and it will taste like a milk. It's a chocolate milkshake, basically. Mm. So I'm, you, I'm, you, you, I'm coming to your next healthy happy hour. Okay, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah, right. just experiment. It's fun. You can just experiment with all different kind of combinations. It's all food. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So, oh, by the way, um, Elizabeth won a ticket to the conference. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> Elizabeth. Yeah. For being diamond. Yeah. Yay! That's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's She's right. Diamond. Yeah. Well, I want to just conclude this section and then I'll open it up for Q&A, but um, we covered a lot, chapters three and four, so we really looked at chronic disease and the common denominators. Can green foods, whole foods be a solution? Lots of rich material there. And then the second 
aspect of what we covered is cereal grasses. What are they? Why are they unique? When do we use them? And where do we find them in the Purium line? So I featured the barley grass juice and I featured this Camus blend because they're pure wheatgrass. But if you look at the ingredients of the Power of 10 <laughs> or the Love or the Power Shake, lots of scoop of greens, you know what? You're going to find cereal grasses. You're going to find cereal grasses in a lot of the Purium products because they are very rich in chlorophyll. Elizabeth, highlight of cereal grasses. What? Why do you love them? Why are they different? Um, well, two things. Because with Purium, they're grown in like the best soil. So, and we learned that um, the nutrients of the plant is directly related to the soil. Um, and also because I didn't know before that um, all those grains were the grasses. And that when we sprout them right in that pre-jointing phase, that's when all the nutrients are there. It's not when they grow up and die and become seeds and we crush them into flour. It's right in that little green stage and it's harmonious with nature because the grass grows back. It, the grazing animals will never eat a piece of grass before the unjointed stage. Um, if it's around. So it's just a natural harmonious cycle. That's when the most nutrients are there. And um, really cool. So nature did it again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to open up to gallery mode. I'll stop the recording and then um, anyone who wants to ask a question, we're here. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next week, chapters five and six.